we are going to tour the coop. This is our journey. Welcome to the Betancourt's Homestead. We're going to take a tour of the penitentiary. So that is the warden's office. It was the original coop and it has a wooden floor. And then behind it is what we call the butt nugget factory. It has a dirt floor and I'll take you in there. Don't judge because it does not look pristine. And then that is called the broody jail. This is their outside living room. It is fenced and it is where they, they funnel into and they can go to all of the paddocks from that area. This is what we call juvenile hall. It's where we raise our baby chicks um, from four weeks on. The baby chicks get to forage through this area and it continues to keep regrowing. With all of that said, let me put you down so I can put my gloves on because we are going to go out and visit the paddocks. So what is a paddock? So I, I tried to reduce my feed as much as possible. We tried making our own feed and I'll talk about that. Did not go well. In fact, it was when we slaughtered the chickens, it was the worst slaughter I've ever done. They just looked so unhealthy. I have the mix, um, but I found that the chickens liked to pick through the food for their favorite things. So they were gorging, each one gorged differently on the peas or they gorged on the, the cracked corn or whatever, but they did not. Um, eat a well-balanced diet by all means <gasps> hi henry okay let's go out into the paddock oh did i mention this is the slaughter we call it the green square like the green mile it's a green square um this is where we set up trash debris gets burned there um and we have our whole little system and then we have a table we clean out it's it's a whole system so I have four different paddocks. Everything is held together by two by four welded wire fencing and T-posts. All of it is built with that. It's the cheapest, best way to do it. I don't know if I showed you. This area right here is totally 100% covered. Um, chicken wire a foot down and a foot out. Rocks on top of the chicken wire. Um, chicken wire up on top to close it off. Like, so literally, predators can get through it, but they really can't, they, they haven't because they'd have to climb up this, they try to get through this, they can't make it, they try to get up there, and by then we've usually pretty much been notified. I have old pressure treated lumber that I saved from the house and I just put it down so that when they dig, because chickens like to dig, they can't dig through. We're gonna have the yelling the whole entire time. So this is their outside living room. They are in their inside living room. That's how we talk about it um, to my husband and I. That's how we converse. There are several doors, and I think I'm about the only one that knows where these doors are. <laughs> so this right here is the door to the um, juvenile hall field. And oh, tree fell. Yeah, I was gonna let them in area two, but I'm gonna have to move that. Oh, hun Henry, I'll be there in a minute. Area two is grass field. It is where the septic tank lines, the septic lines are. Um, when we open this up, we only open it up enough for them to eat down the grass. We don't let them, we don't leave it open for long. So I go through and I seed every paddock with the grass seed blend for my area. So I'm seeding it with Pacific Northwest grass, um, grass seed. Let's go over here and see what we've got. I always walk through, my husband and I both walk through the um, yard to make sure that all of the fencing is still intact because you never know. Oh, and it's not. We have a critter coming in right there. 
So before I open the door, I will go and get that tree trunk and I'll just put it in front. And let me show you this because last year we had a bobcat that was coming in and he was taking a chicken every three days and I finally figured out how he was doing it because he left feathers. Never leave evidence. So this is what I did. I took, that's why you never throw your leftover fencing. I just took leftover fencing, zip tied it all the way and filled it full of debris. And you can see where his path was off into the distance. And he also then came here and I had to do the same thing over there. See, we have big logs laying down. And I'm just looking to see if they've made a dent in something or if I need to clear something. This is area three. Area three is a new area. I laid grass seed down last year and you can see this is where the gate is. So for the gate, all I have to do, so I pull it back and I make sure they can't get stuck in there. So I make sure it's clipped here. They will go in and they will eat all of the green stuff that's in there, which saves me on feed. And then I will come here. This is area four and they've pretty much eaten this. I will come in here and clip all of the stuff that they, um, they haven't been able to reach and I'll throw it over into area three. There's an apricot tree, a tree I need to get rid of, a plum tree, a cherry tree, and some pear trees down there. And that right here in front of us is a hops. Hops grows so well here. This is area one. Area one was closed four weeks ago. And that's how fast it grows back. I probably will come in and reseed this area with area four with some more seed. I'm gonna have to work on area two this weekend. Um, I wanted to give them that area because it was the most lush and beautiful one. And look, we have moles right there. That's what the cats are for. Hey, Mr. Mole. Yeah, I know. You got, did you see them? Did you see the mole holes? Yeah. Come on. Okay. <gasps> Henry boy. Oh my gosh. Let me show you what I'm going to do. So this is their door to the outside. That's the human door. And then down there when I have the other door working, that's the door that they can get in. This is the gate for area one. Let's see if I can. That's their nesting boxes. And real quickly, those are their roosting bars right here. And this is what I meant by a dirt floor. I come in and I throw shredded paper. My taxes go in here. I throw shredded paper and then um, cedar shavings, all kinds of stuff. And then what I do is I rake, I shovel it out. And there's the, I live on a hill. So we had to make an incline. I'm pretty nervous when I'm opening and inside that door when the roosters can get to me. He is really mean to me. We've ordered more roosters, but everybody wants to keep chickens. So there is what used to take us six, um, three, four weeks to get is taking us four months to get chicks. So if you're wanting chicks, um, start early. Let's go. That's my chicken coop people. Now, let's go up and talk. One, my fingers are frozen. <laughs> so I have four paddocks, an indoor living room and an outdoor living room. The indoor living room is outside, but totally 100% covered with chicken wire, two by four welded wire fencing and anything else you could imagine. The chicken coop is called the Butt Nugget Factory, and that has a dirt floor with um, cinder blocks surrounding it, and the whole entire shed structure was built on the cinder blocks. <sighs> Let's go in and be Mr. Rogers. I need to change my shirt. I'm 
just I just want to recap what my area is like. Um, over 13 years, I have been perfecting it. I literally do not like cleaning out the chicken coop every single week. It was a pain in the butt. So I found a, um, I'm, I'm a permaculturist and I went into um, looking to see how people um, in third world countries do their chickens. Um, and how they keep them warm in the winter in colder areas. And this was an absolute genius idea. And then I perfected it a little bit. There were some people that just took their, you know, old sheds that they weren't using anymore and they ripped off the floor of them and they just let them go. I actually um, built a cinder block wall in the exact dimensions of the shed kit that we were buying. We bought it from Lowe's. Um, at the time it was $900. That was 12 years ago. So it's going to be a lot more than that. Um, and then instead of using the plywood for the floor that you have to purchase the plywood for the floor, instead of doing that, I literally built pressure treated two by sixes, laid it on top of the cinder blocks that I had put concrete in down the center. And I also put rebar going down into the ground. I leveled it out with the cinder blocks and made it a flat surface. I built all of the walls to the shed up in our driveway. My husband and I were just joking with somebody how when I built the shed, he would come home from work and I'd say, hey honey, can you help me carry a wall down the cliff? Um, and I would have it totally built so that all we had to do was put it on top of the plates that I had. Because I had big, I have big metal plates down there. If you want to see them, just let me know. Um, I have big metal plates attaching the whole entire unit to the cinder block wall frame. Um, and then I just left the, the floor dirt. I put shredded newspaper, um, shredded like spam mail goes in there, my shredded taxes, the old seasons of the taxes that I no longer need go in there. Everything goes in there. It goes in their nesting boxes, goes in there. They break it down beautifully through the course of a year. Once or twice a year, I'll go in. I actually have to go in uh, probably next month. I'll go in and I will shovel it out with a flat shovel and my husband will take it and put it in the compost pile. I didn't even show you the compost pile. If you watch just me walk into the outdoor living room, there is a huge pile. It looks like just piles of sticks. It's actually their compost pile. That is where I throw all of the debris and the weeds and everything that I pick from my yard, I weed my yard. And every time I pick something, I have a big basket. And when the basket is full, I take it down and dump it in that big pile. And they go through and they eat that. I don't put it in their living room because if I put it in their living room, they literally make a mess and I have to clean their indoor living room. I pile it all in the outdoor living room where they rummage through because they are garbage feeders. They rummage through it and they get anything they want from it. I also take all my kitchen scraps and I throw it right over that fence where they can get to it. Not in the indoor living room, but in the outside living room. Because it is going to attract um, the juices and the leftover stuff will attract the um, rodents and stuff. I don't want them close to the living room. I do have big pans, galvanized pans that if I have like sour cream that, that went bad or I have something that is liquidy that would just go into the dirt, I dump it in the pan and they drink and lick it from there. And then I just go in and grab that at night. You saw the nesting boxes. I actually have those nesting boxes, which if you're going to keep chickens, they have multiple sizes of those boxes. They are the easiest thing to build, the easiest thing to clean. They have lasted the longest. I went through probably three versions of wooden nesting boxes and all kinds of other boxes. And those were very affordable and they came in a little box and I put it together and I screwed it into the wall and they love it and I have not had any problems with it. When I go in and do my once a year clean out, I go in and I clean that too. I hose that out. So when they poop and pee, their poop goes on the floor, their pee goes into the ground. I have no smell in there unless it gets to the, the annual clean out, um, which it's getting close. It's starting to have a little, mm, yeah, clean smell. Um, I don't have to do anything to it except add more um, shavings or uh, 
shredded mail. I don't have to do anything else to it. It is like the best system ever. And at the end of the year, what I'm left with is an amazing compost that goes into a secondary holding cell for six months. And then I use that compost for the garden, the amount to amend my garden. So 100% worth it. How much do I get? We have about 10, we used to have 30 to 40 chickens and I used to get just all of my fertilizer from there because it was perfect fertilizer and you let it sit in underneath the underneath the broody jail. I didn't even talk to you about the broody jail. Um, underneath the broody jail is the compost bin. So when the girls are in the broody jail, um, I can talk about that later if you want. There is a reason I have that. It is the most humane way to get them to break from being broody. And if you keep chickens, you will learn that if they're broody, they don't lay eggs. And not that I want to force them to lay eggs, but they're not the best mamas in the world. As in, you don't get an amazing hatch from them. They're forgetful sometimes and they leave them and then you're out of the eggs and they're not laying and it takes them a while for them to start laying again. So I try to break them as soon as we see one being broody and you know, you'll know. I put them in the cage and they are in the cage for every day that I believe they've been broody plus one. We call it their spa day because literally when they're there, they get food and water and they don't have any ruse attacking them. They don't have to put out, it's their spa days. Um, and then they're there. So if they were broody in the pen and we noticed them being weird and they pick out all the feathers on their chest, we put, we put them in there. If they were broody for four days, we put them in there for five. And then we take them out and put them back in with gen pop, which is what we call it, the gen pop. And they're perfect. And they start laying again. And they don't become broody. Broody is pretty harsh on their system because they stop eating. But once a day, they have these really large poos and um, all the other ladies just like pick at them. It's brutal, Bru just brutal. Anyways, that's my chicken coop, juvenile hall. Um, when we get chicks, which we have on order four months out, I think it was five, five months out to get our chicks um, because we wanted to get males because we're going to be eating those males in there. They attack me. Um, we put them in the feed check for four weeks and we nurture them and we bring them up to um, the, t we, we keep lowering their temperature. And then after that, we'll be hatching our own eggs again. We were what we called a closed loop system. And a closed loop system is just where we have no one that has chickens is allowed in there. Um, we have special shoes that we go in there with. We don't, um, we don't introduce any new birds. So if somebody was to call us and say, hey, we have chickens we don't want. Do you want them? Nope, no thank you, we're good. We don't introduce any new chickens. When we do bring chicks, um, as in re refreshing our flock because we totally changed out all of our birds, which I really was sorry because we had a really good set of birds and roosters. Um, we, for right now, because we are bringing chicks in from the outside, we'll put them in the feed shack for four weeks and then for until they're 17 weeks old, they will be in juvenile hall which means they will have no contact and they will be about two feet at all times away um, with several fences from the gen pop, the general girls. And um, that way we will know if there's any signs of a disease or anything wrong with them. But from this point on, after we get these birds, we will not be refreshing, refreshing our flock for um, probably eight years. That's how long it was the last time. We didn't refresh, refresh our nothing like having a battery die on you. With that said, if there's anything else I can answer for you or show you with that, that is how we keep our chickens. We, after this, mo after May, we will become a closed loop system again. We won't have any chickens coming in or out. It's worked really well for us. Like, subscribe. If you have any questions on chickens, um, drop them down be below. We've been, we're not like amazing, perfect, but we are trying to do it as God sufficient as possible with the least amount of um, food and the least amount of money that goes into it. We're trying to we're trying to be as economical as possible with it because feed is expensive. So like I said before, 
I take all of my weeds from the garden and I give them to them. And the more I can give them, one, the more exercise I get because I'm going up and down stairs all the time. But two, the more I give them, the less feed they eat. I did make my feed. They were disgusting when we went to slaughter those chickens because we, we rotate. We only keep girls for three years um, because their egg production drops in that amount of time that makes it not economical for us to keep them. But the amount of fat that was on them and how big and heavy they were was absolutely the most disgusting thing I had ever seen. And I've been butchering chickens for 12 years. No, 11 years. Yeah, it was disgusting. So I, while I have made my own actual feed, I would rather grow the vegetables and plant um, seed, grass seed in the plots and plot out their areas and have them forage through the areas on a rotation schedule um, and eat as natural as possible rather than me making their feed. And I can give you the recipe if you want, the recipe that I was using. Um, it was a great idea and several of us did it and we all said the same thing. They are some of the unhealthiest looking birds we had ever slaughtered. Um, and you know, you can save their fat for making chicken fat and rendering that down, but it was just disgusting putting your hand up that butt. It was just disgusting. Okay, there you go, peeps. If there's any questions, let me know. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. My chickens are mad at me because yesterday I closed them in for the night and I locked the outside door so they couldn't get out. Little baby rat traps. The reason why they don't work is because they just run off with them. My cat is stuck. I lost this, so I had to go back and look for this. And then I had to fill in that hole. Now we need to find Henry. He's, he's never come in contact with one of the ruse before. You are testing your ever-loving mother's limits. 40 degrees outside. I know that's probably very warm for some of you, but it's actually very cold for me.